Friday. In August of 1986, there was a grocery store executive named Michael Morton. And he came home from work one afternoon to find his house surrounded by police cars and covered with, with crime scene tape. He then discovered that the unthinkable had happened. His wife had been brutally murdered. As is often the case in such situations, the police considered the husband the number one suspect. In fact, they focused solely on him to the exclusion of all other suspects. And in short order, he was convicted and sentenced to prison. In the rush to get a conviction, key evidence was overlooked and even covered up by some dishonest investigators and prosecutors. And at the time, there was nothing that Michael Morton could do about it. But one day, after yet another legal disappointment, he came to the end of his rope and he cried out in desperation, God, please help me. I've got nothing left. And he was, as he was laying in his bed, in prison, trying to go to sleep, he suddenly felt a wave of peace, love, and joy wash over him. And in his words, God bathed me in light. And he knew what he needed to do. And he asked, at that point, asked Jesus Christ to come into his heart. And he became a fully devoted follower of Christ. And from that day on, he was a changed man. He was a free man, even though he remained incarcerated. On the day of his wife's death, there was DNA evidence that was found at the scene which would have conclusively linked the crime to another man, a career criminal. But the evidence was never tested. In fact, during the appeals process, the district attorney did everything he could to prevent this DNA from being sent to the lab. But a judge finally did the right thing, and the evidence was tested, and Michael Morton was exonerated, and his conviction was vacated. In an interview, he said that even though he was released from prison in October of 2011, he was really set free some 10 years earlier when he had had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. No matter what kind of chains may bind you, you can find freedom. No matter what kind of walls or cells that you are to find yourself in, you can find release. In Jesus' very first sermon, this is what he said in Luke 4, verses 18 and 19. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's what Jesus came to do, to set each of us free. He came to break the chains of whatever it is that binds you, whether it's the past, whether it's your current out-of-control situation or, or, or an addiction that you can't beat or a habit that you can't break or a sin that you just can't escape. He came to set us free. As I was looking ahead on the calendar, I realized that Independence Day was right around the corner. And I started thinking about the freedoms that we have in this country, which then made me start thinking about the freedoms that we have in Christ. And I thought it might not be a bad idea to look at some of those freedoms. If you've ever found yourself stuck in circumstances that you're powerless to change, 
or bound by limitations that you can't overcome, I want you to know that your situation doesn't have to be permanent. You can experience change. You can experience freedom. And it begins with allowing yourself to have hope. Giving yourself permission, so to speak, to believe the best about tomorrow in spite of how things may look today. Most of you are probably familiar with the story of Egyptian slavery, how that came about. Joseph and his brothers had come to Egypt where Joseph ruled as second in command. And the Bible says that a new king came to power, a king who didn't really know Joseph that well and what had gone on before then. So this king decided to enslave the people of Israel. And this slavery lasted over 400 years until God prepared a man named Moses to lead his people out of bondage into the promised land. You may also remember that God appeared to Moses in the form of a burning bush. And he placed a call on Moses' life. In Exodus 3.10, we can read it. It says, therefore go, I am sending you to Pharaoh so that you may lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Now, because of some serious mistakes that Moses had made earlier in his life, he wasn't quite sure that he was the right man for the job. So God ended up having to try to convince him to do it. And then in Exodus 6, the main text that we're going to look at tonight, God made a bold promise, and he told Moses to take this message to his people. Look in Exodus 6, verses 6 through 8. It says, Therefore, tell the Israelites, I am Yahweh, and I will deliver you from the forced labor of the Egyptians and free you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and great acts of judgment. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. You will know that I am Yahweh your God, who delivered you from the forced labor of the Egyptians. I will bring you to the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you as a possession. I am Yahweh. This promise, just like the promise that Jesus made back in Luke 4, applies to every one of us. You may feel like you're under bondage, but you can be set free. My goal for this set of messages is that we focus on the steps each of us needs to take in order to experience freedom from captivity. And it all begins... As I mentioned before, when you make the courageous choice to have hope. Right now, maybe all of you can see the chains and bars and guards and walls around you. But there's an unseen reality that can be at work in your life. One that you may not be able to observe with the human eye. But it exists nonetheless. God is at work even now to set you free. Even though your circumstance may not change with the snap of a finger, you can experience today the joy of knowing that, in the words of an older hymn, your redemption draweth nigh. There are three truths that I want to talk about tonight that will give each of us a reason to have hope. No matter what your situation may be, no matter how many setbacks you may have experienced, no matter how many times you may have failed, no matter how defeated you may feel, you can have hope. Three things. The first thing that I want you to remember is that you may think you're alone and forgotten, but you're not. You may think that your situation has somehow slipped through the cracks and God is unaware of what's happening in your life. 
I want you to know that that's not true. God sees your situation because God is right here with us. In Exodus 3, God spoke to Moses from the burning bush. In Exodus 3, verse 7, he said, Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people in Egypt, and I have heard them crying out because of their oppressors, and I know about their sufferings. You can be sure that your cries have reached him. There's nothing that makes you feel quite alone as much as failure. Success attracts friends and followers like honey attracts flies. Failure just attracts the sounds of crickets. When difficulties arise that are beyond your power to change, the world around you may end up saying, yeah, well, good luck with that. But God says, I hear you, and I'm here with you. The writer of Hebrews reminded his readers that God had said in Hebrews 13, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? I've seen accounts of Christians who were imprisoned over in communist countries and, and, and others who were uh, imprisoned during periods of war and, and were placed in solitary confinement. Their captors were trying to break the resistance by depriving them of any contact with any people at all. And so many of these people later said they thought I was alone, but they were wrong. The risen Christ was present with me, and I was in communion, communion with him and him with me. And because of that, I was able to prevail. The world may look at you and think that you're alone. The devil may be telling you that you're all alone. Your failures may even make you feel like you're alone. But I'm here to tell you today that you're not alone. You are not forgotten. The risen Christ is with you every step of the way. And that is reason to have hope. Here's the second truth that I want you to consider. You may think that your situation will last forever, but it won't. The Israelites in Moses' day believed that this was their lot in life, to be slaves. But God said, you know, I have other plans for you. Look in Exodus 6, verses 6 and 8 once more. It says, I will deliver you from the forced labor of the Egyptians and free you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and great acts of judgment. And then down in verse 8, I will bring you to the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you as a possession. I am Yahweh. When we find ourselves bound up in trouble, imprisoned by bad habits and addiction or sin, or even if we find ourselves to be the victim of circumstances that are beyond our control, it sometimes can feel like that it's going to last forever. That's why in the Psalms and, and, and through many of the prophets in the Old Testament, you sometimes encounter the phrase, how long, O Lord? In Habakkuk, sorry about that, in Habakkuk 1-2, it says, How long, Lord, must I call for help, and you do not listen or cry out? And you do not listen or cry out to you about violence, and you do not save. And in Psalm 13-1, it says, Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? And there are times that it feels like forever. When we don't find freedom 
right now in our instant society when we want everything to happen that fast, we're tempted to say, maybe it's not ever going to happen at all. Maybe this situation will never change. Maybe I will never change. Maybe the power of God was going to be beyond my reach forever. It's tempting to say that, but don't believe it. Your past does not need to define your future. The promise of tomorrow is even more real than the problems that you may be facing today. I know you all know the Gaither song, Because He Lives, in English. We sing, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Meaning, whatever tomorrow may bring, I can deal with it. From what I understand, in Brazil, when they sing this song, it translates into English as, because he lives, I can believe in tomorrow. And both of those translations I think are accurate. Yes, you can face tomorrow because God gives you the power to face whatever comes your way. But even more, I want you to understand that because of God's promise, you can believe in tomorrow. You may think that your situation will last forever, but it won't. God is on his way. And then here's the third truth that I want you to consider tonight. You may think that there's no way out, but there is. You may think that your situation is hopeless and that, and that you personally are hopeless. But it isn't, and you aren't. You may think that God is finished with you, but he's not. He'll make a way for you to break free of all that's holding you back. As we often sing, God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19 says, Do not remember the past events. Pay no attention to things of old. Look, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And Isaiah 43, 25 says, It is I who sweep away your transgressions for my own sake and remember your sins no more. So God will make a way when there seems to be no way. In the future messages, about freedom that I'm going to be looking at. I'm thinking of looking at how God will make a way to bring about freedom. There are steps that each of us needs to take all along the way. Just like the people of Israel had to take steps of faith and obedience to get out of Egypt, we're going to need to take some steps of faith and obedience as well. And I can guarantee you that fulfillment of God's promises far exceeds any price we may have to pay along the way. Your situation may feel hopeless, like there's no way out. But it's not hopeless, because God will make a way. Michael Morton spent 24 years and seven months in prison for a crime that he didn't commit. Most of us probably can't make that same kind of claim because with very few exceptions, we've all played a role in the messes that we find ourselves in. The hole that we're in 
Most of us dug with our bare hands. That's why it's so important that we remember God's promise in Isaiah, which I quoted just a moment ago. ago. God will forgive your sins and will remember them no more. If you haven't been washed clean through his mercy, that's the first step that you need to take. Turn your back on whatever sin might have contributed to your situation and let Jesus bathe you in his light. Michael Morton was in prison for almost 25 years, but the last 10 years of his incarceration He was a free man because he had experienced the overwhelming love of God. It may take a while for your situation to change, but your perspective on your situation can change today. If you dare to have hope. Because God is here with you, you're not alone, and you're not forgotten. He's already made plans for your release. Your bondage is not going to last forever. You can believe in tomorrow. And he'll provide a way out. Even when there appears to be no way out, he will make a way. You may not see it right now, but you can believe it. You can even be so bold as to celebrate your freedom simply because you know that it's on its way. That's why we all have reason to hope. Take out your prayer sheets, if you would.